It has a bizarre, yet intriguing taste. House of Cards Season 4. So this was a season that a lot of people had a lot of hope would be better than the previous season. Season 3 was alright, it had some really interesting moments, but in all, in all, nothing really happened in that season, and there was a lot of moments where the show kind of went in directions you'd think that would turn into something really potential, but actually just completely fell flat. This season, the first thing I can say about it is it's the most ridiculous season yet. The level of absurdity that this show goes to in this season was beyond anything I could have ever imagined. The first two seasons were somewhat cemented in, in a realistic environment. The third season kind of went a little bit further, and then in this season it goes balls out. Betrayals are left, right, and center. Oh, so many people come back in this season. Frank has a weird pseudo dream with John Russo and Kate Mara's character, Zoe Barnes, and it's really freaking weird. This season is strange, absurd, and yet it's very entertaining. The beginning of the show is a bit slow. The season starts off kind of with a slow burn because after what happened with the previous season where Claire decided to leave Frank because nothing for her had worked out and Frank had basically pushed her to the edge. So the first bit of the season is about Frank and Claire and them being at odds with each other and basically Claire starts to underside Frank and starts to sabotage his career until a certain event happens where Claire is forced to come back into the fold and there she even manipulates Frank's campaign even more once she realizes the power that she can obtain. The first half of the season is about Heather Dunbar, the other Democratic running mate. Then the second part of the season is about Conway, the Republican running mate who is trying to go for Frank's job. Now Conway was an interesting character because he comes off as this very wholesome, very interactive, very up to date with technology and the way of the world father. He's also played by the guy who played Robocop in the new remake. But but much like every other character who has entered into the world of House of Cards, we start to see him take a dark path, and we see him start to do things that he would never have considered, and basically he becomes a game. But the main thing that I really wanted to see which would happen with this season is what would happen with Claire and Frank. Claire has been one of my favorite characters from this show. She was my favorite in season two, and in season three, she had a lot of potential, but she fell flat, and they came to this real focus that she couldn't do anything without Frank, which was an interesting concept, but I didn't really enjoy it, mainly because I wanted to see some more from Claire. I wanted to see her make it out on her own. Least to say she does that tenfold in this season, and I was very impressed with Robin Wright. Not only should she bring a lot more to this character and have some very interesting arcs, the best episodes by far of this season were episode 4, episode 7, episode 9, and the finale. Episode 9 was interesting mainly because at one point Frank and Conway come into this room to talk about Ico, which is this show's version of Isis, and instead of talking about it, they basically throw underhanded remarks at each other, and then they play another video game. Now, this is something that's kind of been a little bit of a thing for the past few seasons of House of Cards, is they bring in a, they basically put a giant ad out for a indie game. I can't remember the name of this one, but it's the one where you're a ball, an entity, and you're running around trying to get bigger by consuming other balls, and there's other people who are playing, and there's this an anonymity about it, and the bigger you grow, the more people you can consume, but then if a bigger person consumes you, you have to start over. And it was so funny because it really kind kind of had this very dark undertone, this symbolic meaning to what the show is, meaning of what House of Cards is, and I really actually like the jokes that they made with that. In the end, the season does end on a cliffhanger, which is a bit of an annoyance because it's such an unnecessary cliffhanger. I don't know, I'm very much interested in what's going to happen, but the thing that the show definitely started to do was it started to become what could be the future of Trump is the president. That's what made the season scary in the end, especially with the final episode. A lot of what Frank Underwood does is a lot of Trumpisms. I'm not going to specify, but at least to say I was slightly terrified because it's like, wow, this is what could be going with my neighbor down south in the next few months. Oh god. So either way, this season was much better than season three. However, there were still some episodes that drag. The beginning of the season is very slow. There are some characters that are brought back for a reason of which I do not know. Doug Stamper, he's also another one of my favorite characters. He has this really weird 
spark in this season. Like He's basically a whiny little prat, and at one point he feels sorry for a person who died in a circumstance that wasn't really had anything to do with him, yet he shows this interest that was just bizarre because Doug has been able to take out the trash before and have no problem with it. Sure, there was that thing with the prostitute. That was his own personal issue. This had nothing really to do with him, so I find that arc very pointless. Otherwise, though, this season was much better than season three. It's still not as good as season two. Season two is still my favorite. I think it's almost a running mate for season one. In the end, I will give season four of House of Cards a five out of seven. I actually watched it twice just to be sure I was following the right path. Admittedly, the beginning of the season was very slow, but once you get into it, then it starts to get very interesting. And much like how House of Cards usually does it, it's bizarre, dark, and creepy as shit, and very interesting view of politics. You Americans and the millions and billions of dollars you throw at campaigning. We campaign in Canada for 70 days. You guys do it for over a fucking year. Jesus. Anyway, guys, that's all for me. See you guys later.